Hi guys, um, so I got a chainsaw with a 28 inch blade on it and Steel says they don't make any blades for my saw so um, we're going to fix that problem. I'm going to make my own chains. Got a box of uh, ripping chain here, and uh, this might be some old stock, so uh, I wouldn't go by anything as far as what's marked on the box. But uh, typically, you get some boxes for making up chains. Got a bag of uh, preset links here. And there we've got 25 foot of uh, ripping chain. Okay, over here on this side I've got a steel RS chain. Uh, it's a full chisel and you can see it's got a 30 degree angle on it and that's also they put that information on the box so you can see right here it shows it's 30 degrees. This is the top plate angle, this top part right here. And if you look over on this side you can see this is the ripping chain and this has got only a 10 degree angle on it. Um, also, it's got a rounded corner, so it's more of a semi-chisel. doesn't have the sharp edge that it has on this chain here. You can see with a chisel chain like this that has such an aggressive angle on it that the tooth is going to want to lift up in the wood when it cuts, and it's also going to want to lean out. Um, there's enough play in the chain that it can do that while it's cutting. And this point is about the only thing that really does the cutting out here on this end and that tends to dig into the wood so it's going to want to go into the wood both in depth and also off to the side so you tend to get kind of a rough cut. When you go with the ripping chain like this uh, it has less of an angle on here and also the rounded tooth on the on the cutting part um, it has less of a tendency to dig outward into the wood so you get more of a smoother cut. I took a piece of scrap 2x4 here and I just nailed my uh, steel chain onto the uh, piece of board and then I wrapped my other chain around it and I'm matching up the links exactly the same way as the other chain. Okay, so I found where the number of drive links all match up and it's uh, this is the last one here. So I'm going to need to break the chain at this point. So what I've already done is mark the heads of these here and this is the two heads that are going to have to be destroyed on there so that we can push that link out. Okay, I'm going to use my auto punch tool here and uh, just go ahead and mark the centers of these rivets that I want to remove. This is a bench block made specifically for uh, knocking out links and chain and uh, you can see it's marked for 3 8 right here. Uh, so this link can drop in here as it's being knocked out. You can see there's the head of the rivet that just got knocked off and then here's the link that we just removed and in this particular instance we got a tooth out of there. It's been threatening to rain so I've moved our operation inside. So what I've done here is I've taken another piece of scrap board and I put a couple of nails in it that I can just drop the drive links over as I uh, measure it out. I checked the other chain it had exactly 91 drive links in it which is what I needed. Um, this is 3 8 inch chain by the way and if you ever need to measure that 
measure any three rivets on the chain and divide it by two and that'll give you your pitch. But right now I want to break this chain on these two rivets here. That'll make this drive link right here go over the top of that nail, which is exactly what I want. All right, so out of my uh, 25 foot piece of chain length, I've got four 91 length chains that I cut out of it. And I also have this uh, leftover piece here that's uh, about three foot long. And you want to keep track of that piece of chain because you can cut butterfly lengths out of it. It's basically on each side of a tooth, if you leave a uh, drive link on it, you can use those for repairing a tooth section or um, maybe you hit a rock or a piece of metal and you can um, take a whole section out and replace a bad spot in your chain. So this is still a pretty useful piece of material. Okay, to put a chain together, we're just gonna take one of these links and uh, put it right in through the drive links here. Just make sure you don't put any twists or anything in your chain while you're doing this. And then, of course, this link goes in with the notch side down on it, so it's just like every other side link that's on this chain. Okay, so now we're going to have a couple of pins sticking out through our side plate here, and we uh, need to set that. You can use a ball-peen hammer and hammer that over to make a rivet head on it, or we can use a rivet spinner, which is what I'm going to do. Now this particular rivet spinner is made so you can put a ratchet handle in it, but it also has this fixed handle that just goes into the back of it. And essentially all we're going to do is uh, tighten this up in here at the same time while turning this handle. There's a groove in the top of this uh, tool bit on the end of it that will end up swedging the rivet under high pressure and will push it out and form a domed head on there just like a regular rivet head. Okay, it's starting to form a head on that one. Um, I'm going to go over and do this other one just to try to keep things in place. Just show you what kind of progress we're making on this thing. You see it's forming the head here. This one's just slightly started, but this one's going down pretty good right now. The idea is that you want to roll this head over so you can't catch a fingernail under it anymore. You can feel it's kind of a sharp edge on there right now and I can pull at it. Once it's completely rolled over, you won't be able to do that.
found on these um, link plates that sometimes it's handy just to uh, run them over this flat file a little bit. And you can see on the back side that there's some high spots that usually come off of them. Um, they're just punched so it'll raise up a little metal when they do that and sometimes when you put your chains together they bind right there so it doesn't hurt just to go ahead and take that off a little bit. So we'll go ahead and put another one together. One good thing about this is that um, by making your own chains you can save about half price on them. I'm going to get four chains here for about the price of uh, two chains and they're actually kind of fun to make so you have the ability to repair your chains um, if you have any problems with them and uh, you can make up chains like in my case here I couldn't buy this chain for my saw things seem to go a little smoother if you put a little oil on the tools area if you watch this the chain will kind of uh, kind of wrap up one direction as you're cranking down on it but then once the rivet gets down to where it's against the plate you'll see the chain change direction see how it jumped back the other direction once the rivet head hit bottom there the tool hit bottom on the drive link There's a couple of really nice rivet heads. They look factory. Um, there's no bind in the chain anywhere. It works real smooth. So another successful chain assembly. So there you go. An easy way to uh, break your own chain build your own chain, repair your chain. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and as always we got lots more to come.